Hey, good afternoon guys. I'm just gonna try to share out this video before we really get rolling here. Not something I've done live before, so let's just see. Perfect. I hope you guys are all having an awesome afternoon. So today, we are gonna be talking about Ooh, hard to talk and type. Um, today we're going to be talking about what to expect when coming off birth control. And I'm going to be covering um, expected flow, cramping, headaches, changes in weight, um, how long it'll take to regulate, uh, expectations when it comes to acne, no acne, um, also uh, kind of talking about water retention and things like that uh, that may change um, and then also about your ovulation um, period and then in tomorrow's uh, video so the last two episodes in the mini series are going to um, I'm going to spend the whole time talking about birth control and mood and then birth control and your sex drive so let's get started. Uh, my name is Dr. Kate Scott. I'm a naturopathic doctor practicing here in Kingston, Ontario, and uh, my clinical focus is in uh, a lot of thyroid issues and uh, the endocrine system, so uh, hormonal imbalances as a whole. Um, it's really what I'm passionate about. I see a lot of moms that are uh, trying to conceive, women who are having uh, hormonal imbalances that are leading them to just feel uh, really down, have a lot of fatigue, um, issues with the weight management, etc. Uh, and I also see um, and deal with uh, influencing sex drive uh, and getting people back to where they want to be in terms of that. So without further ado, um, a lot of you guys had questions, not surprisingly, about expected flow. And as you will learn quickly, this video is going to be full of it depends and I'm really sorry about that but as with everything related to women almost um, humans in general is that we're complicated and it really depends on what led you to be on birth control in the first place and what issues have been kind of masked by being on the birth control uh, if it is hormonal especially so um, whether it's whether we're talking about basically any PMS type symptom, including um, and then flow, which follows, uh, there's no way really of knowing if you had no issues with your flow and you had what I'll call a, a normal kind of middle grade flow prior to being on the birth control. You had regular periods. You weren't on. You went on birth control just. Uh, purely for contraceptive reasons or prevention of uh, conception, then it's more likely that you're going to return to uh, you know, this, a similar flow to what you had before. Um, that being said, a lot of women that I see have been on birth control for five, 10, sometimes 15 years. So a lot of changes could have been happening in the meantime. You could have not had fibroids and now you do have fibroids and those could lead to a heavier flow and you could notice that um, more once you come off the pill. So there's tons of things that you really cannot account for before making the decision about whether you're going to come off the pill or in trying to predict what the outcome will be once you come off the pill. Um, and just so you know, in terms of uh, kind of your flow compared to what it used to be and what it is now um you know sometimes it trickles back in the sense that your first period is very very light and then it gets heavier and heavier and heavier until you reach your original flow or more flow than you had to begin with sometimes you get a very heavy period the first time around and then it lightens up so there's just so much variability here that i'm not prepared to say it would be unfair to tell you guys that i know what the outcome is going to be because I don't and I don't believe any medical practitioner or woman could really tell you what to expect. I do want to say here though something that I was discussing with um, the mother of a friend of mine was just that I think it's also important when we're talking about hormonal issues and um, just women's health issues that sometimes I feel like we almost rely too heavily on medical practitioners and I would kind of advise you to 
reach out to your mother and your grandmother and ask them what their experience was. Uh, birth control is something that we haven't, we've relied on very heavily in our generation of women. Um, and so maybe your mother or grandmother may not have experience with it, but even in terms of a family history of fibroids or endometriosis or any sort of female endocrine related uh, condition, you know, open up that dialogue and talk to them about what their experience has been. Um, and, and it can be that that information can be invaluable and can often give you a lot more to go on than what I could ever tell you or what a medical doctor could ever tell you. Um, so yes, uh, you know, the other thing is what has the pill been masking in terms of you know, thyroid issues, PCOS, what's going on with your testosterone levels, what's going on with uh, your insulin levels, and those will all impact um, your flow, PMS symptoms, regularity of your periods, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then you also need to remember that you haven't likely been ovulating um, while you've been on the pill, depending on uh, what you're on. So uh, that hormonal imbalance you know that has essentially been going on for five ten years however many years you've been on the pill um, takes a little while to correct itself um, and that will impact your flow one of the things um, that's key to flow first of all when it comes on and then how much is there is progesterone levels um, and that can be heavily impacted by um, being on the pill because you have to keep in mind that Women cycle, like we don't just have, we have a menstrual cycle, but we have all sorts of cycles that are just basically stacking one on top of the other. And each cycle, if it is dysregulated, impacts the regulation of all the other cycles that we are meant to have. And we also have hormonal pairings. So uh, different hormones that work together in pairs or I mean they all work together in symphony but you have LH and FSH that balance each other and need to be there at a certain ratio estrogen progesterone so you know all of those things have been kind of artificially altered for however many years you've been on the pill so you need to give your body a little bit of time to kind of refigure out you know, remanage those ratios so that your flow comes and, and settles out to whatever it, uh, it needs to be at. Um, and yeah, so uh, the one thing that I do want to say is that menorrhagia can be an issue. So that's basically excessive bleeding. And there's a couple things that I want you to watch for in terms of that. Uh, once you do come off the pill, if you find that you're having heavy bleeding, um, what qualifies as men menorrhagia is if you're soaking through a pad once an hour for several hours, uh, if you're waking to have to change your pad um, or having to double up, uh, if you're bleeding for more than 10 days or seven days, sorry, or if you are experiencing uh, tiredness, fatigue, shortness of breath, um, anxiety symptoms or anemia symptoms, uh, then you really do need to consult a medical practitioner about that and make sure that you have your um, your iron levels evaluated to make sure that you're not losing too much blood and uh, that there's something done about that. So next, the next question was about how long it takes to regulate so that you can conceive. So how long it takes for periods to regulate following, follow, following your decision to come off the birth control pill and how long it takes to conceive. So Unfortunately, I don't have a straight answer for that either. Nobody does. If we did, it would be wonderful. But uh, it, I have seen it in my own practice with my own patients, uh, anywhere from one month. So they came off the birth control in January, let's say they conceived in February. They conceived that month if they came off at the beginning of the month. And basically they, they conceived that next cycle all the way up until two years. So, um, what impacts that? That's kind of the next question, logical question usually. Uh, and it has to do with, again, what issues were being covered up? What underlying issues have we not been dealing with um, in the interim while you've been on the pill? And a number of things do have to be looked at because um, it's, you know, yes, you have the hormonal stuff, but you also have physical barriers to conception as well. 
Um, so fibroids can certainly impact that. Uh, endometriosis can certainly impact uh, your ability con to conceive. Um, you have to check out the ovaries, the fallopian tubes, the uh, uterus, and then of course you have the other 50% of the equation which is your partner. So um, if all of those things are in check, if there's no hormonal imbalances and there's no physical um, blockage or thing that is preventing pregnancy on a physical transport level and there's no issues in uh, the the two partners coming together um, then in theory you can get pregnant right away um, but the the thing that I see that becomes an issue is that people come off their birth control pill then they find out that there's a hormonal issue so they spend a bunch of time addressing the hormonal issue and once that's settled out they still can't conceive and then we find that there is a perhaps that you know they go and they seek uh, conventional fertility care and they get their ultrasound transvaginal ultrasound and they find out that they have you know a physical issue that is blocking or um, causing issues with conception um, or they do a post postcoital test and find out that you know sperm and egg are, are not playing nice together um, so there's just a lot of things that affect um, fertility obviously it's a complicated process but it's going to be different for everyone and uh, what else do I have here so we need to look at in terms of getting periods regular I mean we have to look at a ton of things like I, all the things that I just mentioned as well as uh, your lifestyle and workouts and how um, those are impacting or potentially harming regulation of your cycle um, stress levels of course are huge in terms of conception what I always caution people around is that often people decide you know what I need to go off my birth control now because I want a baby like ASAP and then the issue there becomes that every month is super stressful in trying to conceive the baby and they're just working so hard at trying to get the baby that they wanted like yesterday in the meantime their stress levels are going up their cortisol levels are going up and hi Francesco <laughs> and uh, as a result the hormonal cycling gets thrown off such that they can't make their baby so um, you can never kind of underestimate the impact of stress on uh, fertility and cycle regulation because it's huge and it's a bit of a vicious cycle and then um, of course working to optimize uh, weight because weight impacts your hormonal cycling it it just affects everything um, including your ability to get pregnant including the ability to regulate your cycle um, all right so I'm gonna move on to acne now people the next question was about what can I expect in terms of my acne is it going to come back am I gonna have this cystic acne like I had as a teenager usually this question is coming from patients who uh, were put on birth control as a result of having acne uh, so in that case I say the chances are pretty good that some sort of acne is going to arise again when you come off the pill because there is a hormonal imbalance there that has not been addressed so the way I'm going to answer this is by explaining how the pill actually causes your acne to go away so if your acne is a result of hormonal imbalance um, it's usually it's often testosterone that's off so you start taking the birth control pill it increases your sex hormone binding globulin which binds up your uh, testosterone so you don't have as much free testosterone floating around and as a result your skin clears up which is awesome but then you come off the pill sex hormone binding globulin decreases and then your acne comes back and I will warn that there is research out there that says that sex hormone binding globulin can actually stay high uh, for up to a year following coming off the birth control pill. So uh, I have seen patients come to me that have said, no, I just went off the pill. My skin is great. I'm thrilled. And then a year later, their acne flares up and they're like, oh my gosh, Kate, like what's going on? What is this? Um, and so that's sometimes what it is that, that the uh, SHBG levels are just starting to go down and the testosterone is rising and then we're seeing the result of that in the skin. So 
uh, you know, and then just a reminder that your skin is your last barrier from the inside out and your first barrier from the outside in. So your skin is in a little bit of a, either a lose-lose or a win-win depending on your lifestyle choices. Um, and we need to, we need to look at what is affecting your skin from the outside in. So those environmental factors and what is going on on, the, on a deep inner level, a gut level that is going to be showing up in your skin. So oftentimes correcting this issue involves some gut healing. Um, and then as a result, you know, we heal the gut lining, we heal the dermal, the dermal barrier as well in the meantime. So that is that for acne. The next question we had was about weight management. So research so far shows that uh, in coming off the pill and in going on the pill, you have about a third of women who lose weight, a third of women gain weight, and a third of women don't really see any impact on their weight. I do wanna say specifically that uh, Depro-Provera which is a type of birth control, an injectable birth control, actually has shown a bigger impact on weight fluctuations, um, and that is the result of water retention. So that specific type of birth control, if you are on it, you may see a more drastic increase or decrease in weight just as a result of um, a shift in your water balance in your body. So it's not necessarily fat that you're losing or gaining, but rather just water weight. So something to note. Uh, another thing was about breast size. I was really surprised that this question came into my inbox. Um, wasn't one that I had gotten before. So uh, one thing that you may notice uh, in coming off the birth control pill is a slight uh, deflation of your breasts as a result of coming off. Um, but I also always caution people if they do notice that, that think about when you went on the pill, were you still a teenager? Were you fully developed? Like, is it really a result of coming off the pill or is it more, um, just the fact that, uh, you were put on it when you were a smaller breast size and anyway, so it's, it's kind of can get complicated in, in that sense. Uh, and then ovulation, somebody asked, um, about is there any shift in um, how you feel around ovulation. So some women, um, once they come off the pill, have more awareness around their ovulation window, uh, about the fact that they are ovulating. Sometimes that's a result of just being more in tune with their cycle, noticing more shifts. Um, sometimes that has to do with, you know, they're noticing a change in their vaginal secretions, um, but some women actually also notice a bit of cramping, sometimes even a bit of spotting around ovulation because they're ovulating for the first time in however many years. Um, and that is, that is normal. You can have a bit of cramping. Uh, some women have it bilaterally, so on both sides where the ovaries are. Some women only notice one side. Sometimes that means you're only ovulating off uh, from one side. Sometimes it's no indication at all. It's just kind of what you're noticing. Um, but yes, there, there are definitely changes because uh, if your pill has prevented you from ovulating and all of a sudden you are, you may notice uh, a shift you know, between day 11 and 14 um, that things are, are different. And uh, for myself, I encourage people to really take note of those shifts because I think it's really powerful to um, take note of your cycle. And um, it can be, it sounds kind of silly maybe, but I was just amazed at the shifts that my psych, that my body was going through on a monthly basis that I was paying no attention to previously. Um, and it was kind of powerful to see uh, what my body was doing for me without me even thinking about it. Um, and then the last thing that people were asking about was mood and sex drive, but I got so many questions about these two and so much that I wanna say about it that I have separated those two and I'm going to be discussing them in uh, subsequent videos, videos three and four, I think we're on. So that's all I have to say for today. If you guys have any comments, questions, concerns, feedback, questions that I didn't answer today, please feel free to just drop me a line in my inbox and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching and have a great afternoon.